This is 1.1 solving simple equations. Uh, with this lesson, we're going to be going over what these equations are going to be including variables, and you're going to be solving for the variables. So an equation is an expression that has an equal sign in it. A variable is just a letter that represents a number. A linear equa equation in one variable is just something in the form of ax plus b is equal to another number. Um, a and b are constants, and a is not equal to zero. The solution of the equation is the value that makes the equation true. So whatever your variable is equal to, whatever that letter is equal to, is your solution. In order to check any of your solutions, you can plug that number back into the equation, in the original equation, and simplify it. If you get a true statement, you know that the answer that you got for that variable is correct. Inverse operation, operations are just two opposite operations. So like addition and subtraction are inverse operations, and multiplication and division are inverse operations. Equivalent equations are equations that have the same solutions. So for example one, we're solving each equation. For a, we're given x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. We want to use inverse operations with that minus 3 in order to get what x is equal to. So we would just add the 3 to both sides. The 3's would cancel. The x drops down. And you have negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, so x is equal to negative 2. You can always take that negative 2 and plug it back into your equation for x to, and simplify it to see if you get a true statement. If you do, you know your negative 2 is the correct answer. So if we plugged it back in, we would have negative 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 5. You would subtract these two. They have the same sign, so it's the same thing as saying negative 2 plus negative 3. We can keep the sign, add the numbers, so it's negative 5 is equal to negative 5. This is a true statement, so we know our answer is correct. For B, we have 0 0.9 is equal to Y plus 2.8. We can get y by itself by subtracting the 2.8 from each side. So we subtract each side by the 2.8. We have opposite signs here. Either way, our y is going to come down. We have negative 2.8 and 0 0.9. These are opposite signs, so we're going to keep the sign in front of the larger number and subtract the two numbers. The larger number is the 2.8. The sign in front of it is negative, so our answer is going to be negative. And we can do 2.8 minus 0 0.9. The 8 is going to turn into an 18. The 2 turns into a 1. So 18 minus 9 is 9. Drop down your decimal point. 1 minus 0 is 1. So that's just y is equal to negative 1.9. And again, if you plug that 1.9 in to your original equation and simplified it, you should get a true statement. I think, yes, that was it for this page. So for C, we're given n plus 3 is equal to negative 7. Again, we want to get n by itself. So we're going to subtract that 3. We would do inverse operations. So this is subtract that 3, drop down that n. We have a negative 7 minus 3, which is the same thing as negative 7 plus negative 3. Same signs, keep the sign, add the numbers. So it's going to be a negative 10. For D, we have G minus one-third is equal to negative two-thirds. So we're going to get G by itself. In order to move that one-third over, we're going to add it to both sides. So the G comes down. The negative two-thirds plus one-third, you can do this just like you see it because our denominators are the same. If they were not the same, we would have to find like denominators, and then we could subtract the two. So because our denominators are the same, the denominator is going to stay the three 
and then we're going to do negative 2 plus 1, or 1 minus 2, which gives us a negative 1. So g is negative 1 third. For e, we have negative 6.5 is equal to p plus 3.9. In order to get p by itself, we would subtract the 3.9 from each side. The p drops down, and we're going to do negative 6.5 minus 3.9. This is the same thing as negative 6.5 plus negative 3.9. Our signs are the same, so we keep the sign and we add the numbers. 5 plus 9 is 14. Carry the 1, drop down your decimal point. 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So it's negative 10.4. Your next part of this lesson deals with solving linear equations by multiplying or dividing. So with these, you'll see a lot of equations that look like fractions are equal to a number, and it just represents division. So like with this example 2a, we have negative n over 5 is equal to negative 3. It's the same exact thing as saying negative n divided by 5 is equal to 3, negative 3. So the inverse or the opposite of division is multiplication. So you would actually keep that negative with the 5 and say like it's negative 5, or the n divided by negative 5 is equal to negative 3, we multiply by that denominator in order to just leave the n by itself. And we would do that on both sides. So these would cancel, and you'd have n left over. You have a negative 3 times a negative 5. Remember, when you're multiplying, same signs equal a positive, opposite, opposite signs equal a negative. So because these two numbers have the same sign, we're going to have a positive answer. And 3 times 5 gives us 15. So n is equal to 15. For b, b is a little bit different. So we have this symbol that represents pi in this equation. We just have pi times x is equal to negative 2 times pi. We said that that's that pi on both sides here. So a lot of times what I like to do is I, if, especially if I have multiple symbols within my equation, not just my variable, but something that represents another number, like in this case pi, I highlight the term that I'm solving for. So this x is what I'm solving for. I highlight it to let myself know that's what I need to get by itself. So what's on that same side with that x? It's pi. How is it being combined with that x? It's being multiplied, so I have to do the opposite of multiplication in order to get that x by itself. So all I do is divide each side by pi. These would cancel out on the left side, and we'd be left with x. And then on the right side, you have negative 2 pi divided by pi. Well, because they both have pi on the top and the bottom of that fraction, we're only left with the negative 2. Uh, I have a question. For C, we have 1.3z is equal to 5.2. We are going to get z by itself, so we would divide each side by that 1.3. We cancel out that 1.3, we're left with z. Now, when I have fractions that include decimals, I rewrite that fraction without any decimal first before I simplify it. So I look to see how many decimal places I have and the biggest decimal place that I have. So the biggest decimal place that I have is 1. So I would move that decimal point over to the right one place for both of these numbers. If I do it to one number, I have to do it to the other as well. So that 5.2 becomes 52, and that 1.3 becomes 13. So that's 52 over 13, or 52 divided by 13. 
13 times 4 is 52. So this z is equal to 4. For d, we have y over 3 is equal to negative 6. We want to get y by itself, and right now it's being divided by that 3. So in order to get y by itself, we're going to multiply each side by 3. So the 3s would cancel, and we would have y is equal to negative 18. For E, we have a question that's similar to B, where we have 9 pi is equal to pi times x. Now, you could look at this and say, I have pi on both sides of my equal sign. The only terms that are different is that 9 and that x. Well, I'm solving for x, so x has to be 9. Okay, so what I'm saying here is we could move that pi to look the same on both sides so that x would come before pi. So you're saying to yourself, I have pi on both sides. I have a 9 as my coefficient here. So that x would have to also be 9 to make them the same. If I plug that 9 in, I'd have 9 pi is equal to 9 pi. And that is exactly the same. They are equal to one another. So I know that x is 9. I could also divide each side by that pi to get x by itself, and they would cancel out on both sides, so x equals 9. For f, we have 0.05w is equal to 1.4. So in order to get w by itself, I'm going to divide each side by that 0.05. And I get W is equal to 1.4 over 0 0.05. Well, I don't want decimals in my fraction, so I'm going to look at the number that has the largest decimal places. That's my denominator. I'm going to move my decimal point as many places as I need to the right in order to make this a whole number. So if I move the decimal point, I move it two places to the right. If I did it to the number on the bottom, I have to do the same exact thing to the number on the top. So that 1.4, that decimal point, would move two places, and I would input a 0 for that missing number in that place value. So this is the same thing as saying w is equal to 140 over 5. I now can divide much easier. I say to myself, 5 goes into 14 how many times? Evenly, it goes in twice with 4 left over. So now I have 5 goes into 40 how many times? That's 8. So w is equal to 28. If we look at this word problem, your textbook gives you this four-step um, approach to solving word problems. You don't have to use it. I did input this in here uh, just so that way you have it as a guide if you needed it. But like I said, do you need to use it? No. If I look at your work and you don't have that four-step plan in there, I'm not going to mark you off. It was perfectly fine that you don't use it. Okay. So in this word problem, in example three, it tells us that in 2012, in the 2012 Olympics, Usain Bolt won the 200-meter dash with a time of 19.32 seconds. Write and solve an equation to find his average speed to the nearest hundredth of a meter per second. Now, one thing you do need to know with this problem is the distance formula. Distance is equal to your rate times your time. So you'll use that formula in order to solve for the missing term or the missing number, which is in this case going to be r, your rate. So it tells us that he won the 200 meter dash, so your distance is 200, 
with a time t of 19.2 or 19.32 seconds. So that's going to be 200 is equal to r times 19.32. We then would divide each side by that 19.32 to get r by itself. And we, when we do 200 divided by 19.32, we get a long number in our calculator that is 10.35196687. They are asking us to round to the nearest hundredth. So that's when we include that squiggly equal sign. That squiggly equal sign just means about. So R is about 10.35. Okay. If we look at the example, the word problem example that's not done for us, it tells us, suppose Usain Bolt run, ran 400 meters at the same average speed he ran the 200 meters. So our distance is now changing from 200 to 400 meters. So D is 400 meters. At the same average speed, so the same rate that he ran the 200 meters. So we want to look at the rate, which was that 10.35. Our rate was about 10.35. So we're going to use these two in our distance formula. Remember, distance is equal to your rate times your time, and we're going to solve for t. And when we solve for t, we're going to round our answer to the nearest hundredth of a second. So we're going to plug this in. So 400, which is d, is equal to our rate, which is 10.35 times t. We divide each side by the 10.35. These would cancel out. So T is equal to 400 divided by 10.35 gives us 38.647343. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth of a second. So that's the second decimal place. So that 4 because the 7 is 5 or greater, it's going to turn into a 5. So t is about 38.65 seconds. For your next word problem, it tells us that you thought the balance in your checking account was $68. When your bank statement arrives, you realize that you forgot to record a check. The bank statement lists your balance as $26. Write and solve an equation to find the amount of the check that you forgot to record. So you thought that your balance was $68. I'm going to start with that. When your bank statement arrives, you will realize you forgot to record a check. When you write a check, you're taking money out of that account. So you're withdrawing or you're taking money away from that $68. So we're going to subtract the amount from that check, and our balance is really $26, so it's going to be equal to 26. And we're just going to solve for C. Now this, in order to solve for C, involves more than one step. Because there's that negative in front of the C, technically it represents negative 1 times C. So when we move that 68 over, we're going to subtract it from each side. Since the 68 is positive, the opposite of that is negative, and negative is, is subtraction. We get negative C is equal to 26 minus 68. We have a bigger number there that has a negative, so our answer is going to be negative. And then we just subtract 68 minus 26. The 8 minus 6 is 2. The 6 minus 2 is 4. So that's negative 42. We have to get C, not negative C. So in order to get C, we will divide each side by the negative 1 that's in front of it. And that turns everything to be positive. So C, that amount for the check, was $42.